On Larry King now, the legendary, iconic Angela Lansbury. I like to think that Jessica was kind of every woman. She was very sort of straightforward and had a great mind and a good brain. She'd been a writer, but she also had a twinkle in her eye. I'm an empty vessel. I, I am a very straightforward, plain thinking, doing person. But I fill myself with all of these things that, uh, that create a character. The whole business of making movies, it's all gone. In those days, if you were under contract to a studio, they supported you. You'd go to some of the little movie houses around town and all the stars would go and sit in the back row and watch their movie with an audience for the first time. Plus, you ever think of retiring? I don't think so. I'll, I'll probably pass away, you know, with one hand, <laughs> one hand on my script. All next on Larry King Now. It's another edition of Larry King Now, but a very special one, because today we welcome the legendary Angela Lansbury. Angela has had a prolific career both on screen and on stage. She's beloved for her starring role as Jessica Fletcher in the popular detective series Murder, She Wrote, the voice of Mrs. Potts in Disney's animated Beauty and the Beast. Her work is one of five Tonys, six Golden Globes, and she's been nominated for 18 Emmys. At 93 years old, Angela's still going strong, appearing in Disney's Mary Poppins Returns as the Balloon Lady. It is set to hit theaters December 19th. Well, thank you so much, and you look great. It's lovely to be with you. It's lovely to you be You and I go back so many years. Oh, you first know. time I interviewed you, we were <laughs> yeah, children. We were children, exactly. <laughs> uh, in Mary Poppins, you sing a song, right? You get to yes. sing again. Yes, I do. You're the balloon lady. Does she sell balloons? Uh, yes, she does. Oh, she does. And at the end of the uh, end of the movie, I've sold everybody a balloon, and everybody sails up into the air, um, and I stay on the ground. But Mary <laughs> Poppins, I give Mary Poppins and I are kind of uh, friends, and uh, I give her the balloon, and off she goes, and <laughs> everybody else is out there. That's a that's a it's incredible series of books, right? The Travers. Books. Oh yes, yes, lovely, 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 lovely story. You have a history with Disney, right? Mm -hmm. You worked with them with Beauty and the Beast, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Mm -hmm. Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was really an enormous success. Still is to this day because why? Because it involves children, and uh, I've, I've discovered that if you have a movie with a good child's role in it, you're you're off and running. You know, <laughs> and that is true in this in that instance. It's, did you always sing? Yes, I did. I've sung from the day I mm, got out of my crib. I think I've been singing, mm -hmm. and still do. You have a lovely lilting voice. In Beauty and the Beast, that, that, that his wonderful song. Oh, yes. Although you, you, you must, you have to remind yourself that you do it in a little tiny compartment mm -hmm. with, <laughs> with a microphone over your head. Right. And that's how you do it. And that's how you sing it. Uh, but in your mind's eye, of course, is the picture of where you are and, and what your character is doing. And she was a teapot, you know. And uh, <laughs> imagination helps a lot. <laughs> You're from Great Britain, right? I was born in London, yeah. What brought you to the States? The war, World War II. We were evacuated from Britain in 1940, and we came to America without a penny in our pockets, really. We were completely supported by a wonderful American family, who took care of us during the years of the you, war. Did you saw the bombs dropping on London? Thank God I did not. Uh, Liverpool, the city that we, we embarked from on the ship, to come to America was bombed the night we, we left our ship. And our ship uh, was also uh, bombed and was lost at sea after we got off. Were you, how old were you? You were young. I was 14. Mm -hmm. When did you start acting? Uh, when I was <laughs> about six, <laughs> no, I'm uh -huh. kidding. My sister, bless her heart, was very enthusiastic about doing 
home theatricals. So I did a lot of home theatricals, and uh, we'd bring the house down every Christmas doing, you know, playing this and that and every, everything else. And uh, I don't know, I just loved make-believe. How did you get your first American film? Was Gaslight, mm. which was an incredible thriller. Mm. Charles Boyer trying to kill Ingrid Bergman. Mm. And you're the maid mm. in the house. Mm. What was that like? Thank goodness. Uh, you know, I'd had enough training as an actress. I had gone to drama school. So I wasn't a total newcomer to, be, to acting. And here was a wonderful part. If you think about Nancy and, and Gaslight, Oh, wow. You know, I mean, she embodied everything that was sexy. And, Beautiful. Uh, oh, you know, she, she really had it. What was it like shooting it? Was it a good time? Oh, it was an incredible time. Imagine, imagine what it was like to be appearing in a film at MGM Studios in the 19, uh, early 1940s and, uh, you know, no dressing rooms. I, I had to dress in a little sort of black um, fabric house that was on the set and I didn't have a dressing room or anything. This is the first time I'd ever been in a in a in a movie in in a, you know in Hollywood. It was huge. A huge adjustment. <laughs> okay, tell me how Murder She Wrote came about, that incredible series. How many years? Twelve. And still going. <laughs> yeah, and I was everywhere. Yes. Did you have any still. idea it would be the hit it was? Oh no, no. Uh, you know, mystery is, is, is always interesting. And the person who's perpet uh, you know, perpetrating the, 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 the plot uh, or is involved, shall we say, in the, in the plot, it can, be, it can be very riveting, you know. It's hard to leave that screen if you get involved, you know. And if you make it as interesting as possible, it's an, it's an ongoing piece of entertainment. She connected with the audience, though, didn't she? She, she had a quality. I like to think that Jessica was kind of every woman, you know? Well, you know what yeah, I mean by that. Yeah. She had a little bit of everything, you know? She was very sort of straightforward and, and uh, uh, had a great mind and a good brain. She'd been a writer. Driven. But she also had a twinkle in her eye. Yeah, she did. Uh, she didn't, uh, you know. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> When we return, Angela Lansbury on what keeps her going and if she ever plans to retire, plus her advice for young people in the business. We'll be right back with this edition of Larry King Now. We're back with Angela Lansbury. The New York Times referred to you as the first lady of musical theater. That was in the 1960s. Was theater your first love? Yes, it was. I, uh, I trained to be a stage actress. And uh, thank goodness I did, because otherwise I could never have come back to Broadway after many years in, in bad motion pictures <laughs> at MGM. <laughs> uh, so when I went to Broadway, I was ready for it. You know? What was your first Broadway Absolutely show? For really. Well, it, it uh, actually was a little musical, uh, oddly enough. Uh, Anyone Can Whistle, it was called, uh, by Stephen Sondheim. And that was the first time I ever appeared on stage. You did a Sondheim musical? Yeah. Was Mame your breakthrough? Mame was my breakthrough, yes, definitely, definitely. Because, uh, thank God, goodness, uh, Jerry Herman had seen uh, the, the, the one that I did, which was Anyone Can Whistle. Mm -hmm. And uh, from that, he, he absolutely decided I was going to do Mame. You take the gloom right out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> what a great show that was. Yeah, it's been fun to do. Wonderful. Fun to sing. Mm. Uh, wonderful to sing in that. Uh, great songs. And the other great, great actress who was with me. Um, oh, B. Arthur. Yeah. Funny. B. Arthur and I were launched into that. I never. She was Maud. Oh, she was great. <laughs> yeah, she was Maud. It was um, fun to do the same thing every night. Although. Great theater actresses and actors have told me it's not the same every night. Oh, no. Every night's different. It's absolutely true. Every audience is different. Every reaction from the audience is different on each performance. There's no question about it. Oh, I mean, there are some sure laughs, as we say, in, in comedy. And if you don't get them, <laughs> mm, 
trouble in River City. But uh, all things being equal, you know, to be able to entertain an audience is one of the great dreams of actors. And to get the feedback from that audience is, uh, believe me, you know, food and drink to the average performer. How has Hollywood changed since you started? Oh, it would be hard to, hard to define how, how Hollywood has changed. There are no studios. There are none of the, the things that we held dear at the time. To be under contract to a studio, to be owned by them, and to be put into their movies. And, of course, in those days, there were so many movies. Every, you know, every week there was a new one coming out. And the whole business of making movies, it's all gone. I mean, I, it does exist, but in a totally different, very impersonal way. In those days, if you were under contract to a studio, they supported you, you know, and you, you went out there and you went to previews at nights. You'd go to some of the little movie houses around town and all the stars would go and sit in the back row and watch their movie with an audience for the first time. I asked Robert Taylor... Robert did he? I, I loved. Did, did did he like that time? Those red carpets and the mm. red. He mm. said he loved it. Yeah. He loved the contract days of the mm. studio, but they told you what you were going to play, right? You didn't oh. have a choice. You did not. You did not have a choice, and uh, I ran into problems with being cast in movies that I had no interest whatsoever in being in, but because I was under contract. I couldn't fight them on it, and I tried. What was it like to go into a movie you didn't want to do? It was it was rough and tough, uh, but you did it. I mean, if you're if you're a professional actor, which I was, you know, I was tr a trained actor. I wasn't a, a, a peach queen, uh, the queen of the peaches, or <laughs> you know anything like that. I w I was an actress, so I was prepared to put on the clothes, take on the character, and be something other than myself. What? keeps the wonderful Angela Lansbury going. Uh, You're 93, I'm 85. Yeah. I know what keeps me going is I love what I do. What keeps you going? I think that I'm interested in, in every part of life. In other words, not just acting, but everything that is given to us as human beings to in, indulge ourselves in, in our lives, that's what interests me. My grandchildren, my life, cooking, driving, being independent, I think, is p very much part of my credo. I lost my darling husband uh, many years ago, and I've had to create a life for myself without him. But I ha what do I have in place of him? Oh, nobody could replace him. But, but I mean, I have my grandchildren now, and uh, their lives interest me greatly. You ever think of retiring? Uh, no, I, I don't think I don't think so. I'll, I'll probably pass away, you know, with one hand, <laughs> one hand on my script. Now you're in two big movies, mm -hmm. The Grinch and Mary Poppins are small parts, but mm -hmm. you keep on keeping on. Well, you do, you know. Uh, it, it was a, a lovely experience to go to Britain and uh, to shoot the movies there, and. Uh, I, I, you know, I never turned down a good offer, so. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're going to put Angela Lansbury in kind of a hot seat as we play If You Only Knew. You can see Angela in The Grinch, that's currently in theaters, and Mary Poppins Returns, which will be released on December 19th. Stay right there. We're with the delightful, wonderful, talented, beautiful, Historic, <laughs> iconic, old, and old. Uh, well, too old. You're we little, throw in that. Just, you're looking just at a lot of years that. sitting here, folks. They have to carry us out. Angela Lansbury. <laughs> By the way, did you ever want a role badly that went to someone else? Oh, I'm sure there were dozens of them. Certainly, when I was at MGM, yes, a lot of, a lot, lot of, uh, yeah. I remember having to go and, and talk to L.B. Mayer, who was the head of the studio at that time. What was he like? Well, uh, we got along, you know, but uh, he wasn't, uh, you couldn't change his mind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he decided what you were going to do. And uh, How many movies did you do? Ah, oh, gosh, I never, I, I never counted them, to be truthful. 
probably about 20 at MGM. Do you feel 93? No, 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 no way. No way, Jose. No, <laughs> I don't. We're going to play a round of If You Only Knew. Okay. What's your proudest accomplishment? Being alive. I'm <laughs> <laughs> being alive. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> What's a food you can't stand? Uh, that's a hard one. I, I'm a big foodie. Yeah, I yeah. hate eggs. Do you? Yeah. Really? I must have had a bad experience as a child. You must have. You must have. So there's no food you hate? No. What's the best piece of advice? Oh, marzipan. What? Marzipan. Marzipan? Yeah. A lot of people love marzipan. I know they do. I don't mm. understand why. I, ooh. Best piece of advice you ever got? Learn your lines. Worst piece of advice you ever got? <laughs> You don't want to go into acting. <laughs> right. Who's someone from history you wish you could take to lunch? Several. There'd be a whole crowd outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> Who pops out? The Queen of England. Any regrets? No. Is there someone you've been starstruck by? Oh, many. Many people. Actually. When you came out to Hollywood, you must have been in oh. awe. Of oh, yes. Because you knew all of them, right? I got to meet them all. If you weren't an actor, mm -hmm. what would you be? A politician. Really? I think so. What do you think of what's going on in American politics now? Well, <laughs> it's hard to get up in the morning, considering what we're facing at the present time, I think. It is. It really, really is. It's very, very depressing. And I, I hope we can get through this period that we're in at the present time. Favorite film? Favorite film? Ooh. Um, I've got a lot of faves, I have to say that. I, I wouldn't want to hurt anybody's feelings who's still alive. I'm, I'm still around, but you know, a lot of people are gone mm. who I admired inordinately. Uh, Catherine Hepburn, for instance. And what was she like to work with? Oh, she was fantastic. We got along very, very well and became very f close friends, actually. In the last years of her life, I was very much there with her. I mean, you know, she lived in New York, and uh, I was a friend of hers, and we were we were good pals. You have they a guilty pleasure? Eating ice cream. Try yeah. not to do that at <laughs> eight o'clock at night. It's very difficult to not go to the refrigerator and take out. <clears throat> Yes. Ah, oh, Fletcher. <laughs> when we come back, Angela Lansbury will answer your social media questions. We've got a lot of them. You can see Angela and Mary Poppins returns in theaters December 19th. We'll be right back. We're back with the great Angela Lansbury. We have some social media questions. Aaron Shapiro on Twitter. What was it like to work with Frank Sinatra and Judy Garland? Frank Sinatra was in the great movie. Um, uh, From Here to Eternity. No, 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 no. Well, that, that, he was in that. No, the one movie we were in together was The Manchurian Candidate. Oh, you were the villain. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. I hated you. Of course you did. I hope you did. You yes. were the Chinese, and you, you mm. the husband, you wanted to shoot oh, the yeah, kill. Yeah, the yeah. Absolutely. The works. The works. Absolutely. You didn't have any scenes together. No. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. The one time we did work in the same movie, we were never in the same scene. We were, actually. We were in a cloud, crowd scene, as they say. And I remember kind of ruffling past him, but we never were face to face. So I never got to play a scene. Oh, it was which a would great movie. You know, I'll tell you a little story about Frank, which I think is so interesting. I went to a party before I went to New York to, to play Mame. And one, uh, we were sitting, and he came and sat down beside me, and we started talking, and I told him what I was doing. He said, Angie, I will go with you. I will teach you every single song that you're going to sing. I will help you to do this. Wasn't that an extraordinary thing that he did? I, I never got so over generous. it. so generous. Such a generous man. What was uh, Judy Garland like? Well, Judy, was, she was great. We were kid, you know, we were very much of the same era. Uh, we grew up practically in the same era. And uh, she and I got along very well. We used to drive back and forth from location when we were making films like What a life you've had. Uh, Stephen Stonebreaker on Twitter, favorite episode of Murder, She Wrote? 
do you know how many murder she wrote that I was who <laughs> 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 was in? Um, I, I'm trying to think. I, I really don't you have can, a favorite. Yeah. No, I don't. Thomas Owens on Twitter. What keeps you motivated to keep acting? Why do you still like it? I only really come alive in as an interesting person, in my estimation, when I'm acting. Because I can take on all kinds of physical, emotional attributes, which I personally don't have. I'm an empty vessel. I, I am a very straightforward, plain thinking, doing person. But I fill myself with all of these things that, uh, that create a character. And that, to me, is the fun of being an actor. Is you, you're not yourself, you're 50 different people. And you take these people and you, you use them and characterize uh, a, a, an individual. It's always playing, you in them. But it, it's always me, yes. But, you know, <laughs> being somebody else is the, is the greatest thing in the world because you don't have to really let on who, you, who I am. Anthony Quinn told me if you're an actor, <clears throat> it's childlike. Yes. Children are good actors. Absolutely. You watch them play cops and robbers. Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Enough, taking on all the... <laughs> yes. And they're not afraid to fall. No, <laughs> no. Miss Bridges on Twitter, as a young actress, did you think you'd have a long career? I had n no conception of, what, of, the, of the length of a career that I would uh, end up having. I've had been given so many opportunities by people, not me, directors, producers, writers, who say, I would like her to play that role. And it was those people that I thank, am so thankful to because they wanted to work with me. You have to find something to like in the character you play, right? Yes, something to like. Because the person like. doesn't dislike themselves. Well, hopefully, no, yeah. no. So was it hard to play that woman in Manchurian Candidate? As an actress, no. Uh, as Angela, I couldn't believe what she got up to, you know. But as an actor, I was able to create this illusion of a, a woman who I wouldn't have, give, oh, wouldn't have let her in my house, you know, because she was evil, you know. Yeah, incarnate. Absolutely. Robert Arthur on Facebook, any interest in returning to Broadway? At this time in my life, I would have to say no. Would be rugged to do it every night. Right? Yeah, it would be. I'm not saying I couldn't, but I, I wouldn't, all right? <laughs> okay. And Jeffrey Ewell on Facebook, I saw you a few years back in the role of Madame Arcati in Noel Coward's comedy, Blythe Spirit. How did you have so much energy? <laughs> That's Is that a, a fun play to do? Oh, great fun. Yes. Great, great, great fun. I, I thoroughly enjoyed playing Madame Arcati. Uh, she was a wonderful character. You are an icon and a delight, and I love you. <laughs> uh, I love you too, darling. We're of the same era yeah. in our lives. We've shared all these years, and it's such a great pleasure to My be with pleasure. you today. Big thanks to Angela Lansbury for joining me today. Be sure to see her in two films this holiday season, The Mayor of Whoville in The Grinch and The Balloon Lady in Mary Poppins Returns. That's out <laughs> December 19th. You can always follow me on Twitter at King's Things. I'll see you next time. <laughs>